I'm home court, you stand in trial. Why ain't I see you round back when I was down? I'm home court, you stand in trial. Why ain't I see you round back when I was down? They ain't believing me in the beginning. Who wanna hang around now they see me winning? I'm home court, you stand in trial. Why ain't I see you round back when I was down? What's up, world? It's your boy, Big Court, from the Holding Court Podcast. Today's episode is sponsored by Uncle P's Pancake and Waffle Mix. It's available in all grocery stores nationwide. This is Black-owned. This is ours. Product outweighs talent every day. So remember, there's no limit to your success. Uncle P's Pancake Mix, available right now. All right. This is the greatest <laughs> guest in America history, you guys. For, oh, go ahead, go ahead. All right. So in the building, right here, my brother from another mother, the incomparable Silk the Shocker, No Limit Records. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Uh, million. Set how many records? About ten million. Ten sold. million. My sink solo by self. Ten million yep. solo. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He's. I consider him the godfather of the flow that y'all all in love with right now. <laughs> yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? The Detroit sound, blue face. All that been done. Silk was ahead of the curve on that. You yep. know what I mean? Yep. And welcome to the show, my brother. Glad to be here, my guy. Glad to be here, my guy. Yeah. Appreciate sure, you all the love. Sure. I love. You know, and that's that's my no limit brother right there. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. man, let's get to it. Slim. Let's do it. Let's do it, my brother. Let's you know, do it. I mean, I know you. I've known you for what twenty five years now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, when I first came to No Limit in ninety five, mm -hmm. first record that I ever did on No Limit was with you and P. Okay. R. I. Okay. P. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, that was mm -hmm. our first record together. Um, so let's, I want to drag it back though. Let's talk about, um, just growing up in, in New Orleans. I mm -hmm. mean, everybody knows you're from New Orleans, but tell us what that was like, you know, especially with Master P being your, your older brother, um, C Murder being your brother. Yep. Yep. Like? Yep. I mean, I, me growing up in New Orleans was crazy cause I was the youngest, but, um, I think back then I just had to fight, man. I remember just fighting so much, um, just for the name, the family name, but just being a young one. Uh, I, I taught I taught myself how to fight. That's one thing I could do is fight. I fought, I fought, fought, fought. Um, just because um, where you're from, it ain't like you could leave out of there. So you just had to have respect for, you know, just have to have respect. And so that's what taught us how to, you know, um, always, you know, do what we have to do to uh, to keep our name intact. Uh, I don't care where I was at. Uh, in the streets, out of streets, whatever, it's, it's the same principles. It's like um, respect people, get respect. Um, growing up in New Orleans was crazy because it was murder capital of the world. And it was like, but we, we was there, so we ain't know no better. We just adapt to the environment. Right. And that's why music was what it was. Um, just like, I mean, just every day it was a different obstacle. Um, uh, trying to figure it out, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, it was it was tough, but um. So what was a young silk like? Uh, you know what I'm saying? Was you was you? Cause you know, as when I got to know you, I mean, <laughs> you've always been kind of laid back, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. kind of off in the cut. Were you always kind of reserved or introvert, or were you when you were younger? Were you more you know, uh, outward or more rambunctious? When I was younger, um, I was kind of like more of a black sheep, like more like I get it, cause I was. It was a little while, um, I would say, um, just, I, w I wasn't quiet, but I was trying to figure life out. So I had an older brother, um, I had four, I had three older brothers, a sister. So me going back and forth from my mom, my dad, whatever, just trying to figure it out. But the streets don't give you time to figure it out. It's like either, um, either you figure it out or you get sucked, you know, you get sucked yeah. in, right? So. Good thing for me is that um, I didn't. I I, I figured it out. Um, I, I, a lot of my friends didn't. Um, I, I wouldn't say that it was anything I had to do. It was more like grace of God because I was doing everything wrong to where my family would be like, you're going to end up dead in prison, right? Uh, that's, that was the thing. And, they, and it, was, it was true because I was running with the wrong people. Um, so the statistics was there. All my friends wasn't, you know, wasn't making it. Um, and so... And I was being, I was bad. So I was stealing, taking, you know, doing whatever. And so the numbers would say, yeah, you're going to end up being like that. But, you know, nobody get a chance to tell you what you're going to be 
you know, but you were the man up above. So right, yeah. right. Why do you think you were bad? You would you were you acting out, or was it something going on in you or at home, or was it environmental? Was it influences? Um, I would say it was both. I, I think it was more of not really knowing what's out there. So, um, and nobody tell me otherwise. So right. So I'm like trying to figure it out. Like my older brother doing what he's doing. Every you know everybody, but you don't realize when you're young in a project. Nobody could see the young part, so there is level. So if he's older and Kev is older, the young part is where the treacherous stuff happens at. Mm -hmm. And you never see it. Like your, like your mom or dad, whatever, would never see or understand what you're going through in the streets. Mm -hmm. They right. could be like, oh, I was there before, but they'll mm -hmm. never understand what you're actually going mm -hmm. through. So with me, I had to, I had to really do it. So um, I remember times where... Um, you know, neighborhood dudes um, would literally, I would see death, right? So, so I didn't, I didn't, I didn't avoid death. I just missed it. Like you could literally be a, okay. So let's 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 go. To, I tell some people like this. I say, um, you take a cub, a lion cub, right? So you take a lion cub, and you think like, um, it's gonna be a lion one day, right? Mm -hmm. But until it make it become a lion, it's a cub. Right. So anything could kill it. A snake could kill it, a, a hyena, but a hyena couldn't kill a lion when it's a lion. But it, until that moment, it becomes a full lion. Anything could happen between that. Mm -hmm. So that's what the street did to us. It was like a constant just missing it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I, my friends, they, they didn't miss it. They, 30 years, yeah. dead. So when I did the, Miss My Homie song, that was a real song right. at the time. You know what I'm saying? Right. Mm -hmm. Did you ever uh, do, do time in juvie? <laughs> yep, I was, I was, I was, I was Tetris, man. Um, <laughs> you know, it's funny because, um, you know, Gambino family, right? Yeah, yeah. So my first time, I, it's, it's, I don't know, it's weird, but my first time, I was like, um, maybe my second time, whatever, I don't know what it was. But um, um, when I first got in there, Gambino, yeah, um, I think Tunch, the little one was there. Mm -hmm. He's my cousin, so he kind of showed me the ropes. But what, what happened was my mom. Because I think me being a young person, when you know your parents see you in any kind of jail, right? Yeah. They think like, oh, you're gonna, you're gonna get something happen to him, and you know, whatever, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. But realistically, it it made me really worse because yeah. I went there, and I could fight, so I just fought. I just fought yeah. my way. First day, I got there, fought. Second day, I asked him, he'll tell you, and he told me to fight. He said, as soon as somebody says something, just fight, you know, just fight him. Whatever. Who told you that? Uh, Lil Gotti. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know, yeah. Lil Gotti. Lil Gotti. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So he he just told me, and he did it too. He he showed me, watched his cousin. He just did. Big old dude by like, <laughs> by like, like six eight. He just yeah. you know he little. He like right. five one. He just jumped on him and he. Wow. Just, but the dude said something to him like, "Oh, turn the TV off." He just jumped on. Yeah. Him. So it really messed me up because I thought it was I thought it was all peaches and cream just because nobody really wanted to fight. So I I wanted to fight everybody, and you know it was like so they just let me kind of go through it, which messed me up because my mom came to court, and she was like, um, she was crying whatever, and she was mm -hmm. like. Um, she was kind of like my baby, you know, my baby, yeah, right? Yeah. But I was like, "What you crying for?" Because I'm, I'm actually okay. And when I got out, it, it made me like don't care about nothing until I turn 18. Then I was in the real, in the real yeah, world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying, but other than that, it wasn't really nothing nobody could do with me. You know, that's crazy because my juvenile um, experience mm -hmm. <laughs> was a little bit different. You know, mm -hmm. I, I went to jail at 15, mm -hmm. and um, it was the first time I had been locked up, mm -hmm. and it was for some serious shit too. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. They were gonna certify me as an adult. Ooh. So I remember um, going up in the courtroom, <clears throat> you know, I'm playing, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm putting it on, mm -hmm. you know, I'm like, yeah, I don't <clears throat> care. So yeah, the yeah. judge is like, man, we can't let you out because we feel like that you're a menace to society. Mm. I'm like, ah, man, whatever, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Man, I went back to my, my cell. Mm -hmm. They shut that door behind me. Mm, I guy. sat on that motherfucking bed. Mm. A tear trickled down my face. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, and I'm like, damn, mm -hmm. this is what it got real. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, you you think that you really want that mm -hmm. until you got to deal with that part of it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and I would say, you know, just knowing a lot of these youngsters, whatever, um, I see them and I'm like, you know, they they don't think they don't add the time up because I was ready to do like 10, 15 years, like because mm -hmm. I figured like I was young, so I'm like, oh, you could do five years, ain't really mm -hmm. nothing, right? And so that's what kind of you could you think that, so you think like you don't you never lived before, so you looking at life like oh, it's just a nickel, right? Yeah. So you like oh, but you don't understand what a nickel really is, right? And with 15 and 20 years, so right. right? So 
So me, I never had the increment of time because nothing really scared me at the time. Mm-hmm. So it's like, so like you said, man, F y'all in this court, I ain't tripping on nothing. So they got the young dudes right now who's really thinking like, I can murk me somebody in, in 30 years. You know, they don't think about 30 nah, years. they're not forward. They just like, no. boom, okay, I ride for my homies, whatever, we, we got this. And then it's like, boom, 35 years, but they only 17 or 18. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, mean, yeah. you ain't, I mean, you ain't even start living until you like 15 or 16, or like 20, maybe 20. Right. I don't think I figured it out till late. Nah, man. <laughs> you know, I'm still yeah, trying to figure that, it out, that's right? That's what I'm saying. So, like. <laughs> so, but, but they don't really accolade the numbers because sometimes... First thing with me was like going, going in, going out, boom, and it was like when I, when I juvenile, well, juvenile where I was at was the toughest place you could be. At. It was worse than some of the real jails, but to me, it, it wasn't like the like real because you wasn't like we didn't have like knives and stuff in there. So you they made it, but for the most part, none of nobody's doing that. It's just yeah. these. So yeah. when it comes to those, I was little, but I I I, I, I had hands, so that yeah. was it. So it really. It really wasn't. It hit me until like you really say, "Oh, this 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 real life." You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And you know that's when you hit the, the the big stage, whatever. But people don't realize. So if you juvenile, if you like they say they certify you, yeah, it's right after that you going to the big, yeah, you going, right? yeah. And so now you like you 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 you're a man now. So mm-hmm. right. So I don't think the young people when they when they sling an eye because I get it. You know you it's. It's up, it's up, right? So you sling the iron, boom, 50 years. And you like, oh, now it's real. So now you thinking you 17, when you get to about, like you say, 35, you like, oh my God, I'm a better person, but you still got 40 years left. Right. You know what right. I'm saying? That's a, that's, right. that's a horror. I seen some people when, when I was there, I was like, I was like, man, I'm, I'm going I'm going home in a few, but. I mean, like, what do you think about that? Because mm-hmm. like, even with the laws on the book, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. I always thought that. And it's easy to say that when you haven't lost a loved one, mm-hmm, you know what mm-hmm, I'm saying, mm-hmm, to that to the perpetrator of that mm-hmm, crime. Mm-hmm. But I don't think it's cool for somebody at 16, 17 to commit a crime and mm-hmm. then have to basically the rest of their life. There's no, you know, because you got to understand if that if that person 40 years old, 35 years old, that is not the same individual from a 17 year old kid. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like. You know, I understand there needs to be some type of punishment, obviously, mm-hmm. but where is the room for rehabilitation and, you know, to be able to atone for that? Because that's not, you know, even some people in their 20s, mm-hmm. you know, 20, 21, you're still really young because mm-hmm. they say your brain, what, your your frontal mm-hmm. uh, lobe <laughs> cortex or whatever ain't finished yeah, yeah. coming together when you like 20, 21 mm-hmm. years old. So mm-hmm. um, the brain is still developing and then you can, you know, you consider, uh environmental factors, you know what I'm saying? So what do you think about juveniles get be given these 60-year sentences for something they did at I, I think I think it's justified in this case. Um, but I also think that it's, um, it's the upbringing, it's society too, mm-hmm. right? So they, we don't have a chance to understand the dynamics of where we come from, um, education, um, our opportunities, right? So, so we literally... If you really think about where murder capital of the world came from, from Louisiana, was like, who was fighting, who was fighting, who was fighting. Oh, and then somebody upped the gun, a knife, boom. So that was it, right? Then it's like, it's up, it's up now. <clears throat> now we go get a 22, now it's, now it's a 38, now it's a, right. a nine. Yeah. So it became so fast because we couldn't leave the city because New Orleans is a, a bowl, right? So right. if you leave out New Orleans, where you at in Baton Rouge or the country, right? So if you're a city person, you in there. So it's like, my man ride on me, we take it a little bit further. And it yeah. just kept going back and forth. So I don't even think that it's, I think that some of it's justified because um, they're not supposed to be rehabilitated at that point. Because you, you got to think about it. The, 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 um, if you do stupid stuff, like I know some people who, who might have carjacked somebody, went yeah. the wrong way, boom, they killed the innocent man, right? right. So person they coming back, I don't, I don't think that rehabilitation is so much innate favor because of the crime right now if you do some of these crimes where so you know accidental and stuff like that or some drug stuff so damn so so damn slim so no walking it back you kill somebody at 17 um, and well listen i i know so i can see so maybe it's more personal for you because yeah. you had a brother mm-hmm. that was that was killed mm-hmm. at a young age mm-hmm. and you were how old when when kevin got killed i was young i was like maybe about, i was still in high school so okay and he was just a few years older. No, he's older than me. He's like, okay. um, so P's like, um, 
Uh, yeah, so he's like a year or two younger than P, maybe two okay. years younger than P. Okay. Two or three younger than P. Okay, but so yeah. so the person which I know the story, I mean, it was a friend, but was he was he was he a teenager? Was he? Uh, no, they, they they probably was like nineteen or eighteen. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is he still in jail? No. Nah. Wow. He only, he only did like ten. Like ten. One of them got killed, whatever I think. Wow. Um, and then one of them got out. I think the one who didn't do that much time, I think he must have got killed or something. I don't know, yeah. whatever. But um, the other one, yeah, it was, it was Damn, short. he only did 10 years. Like, so yeah. you think maybe that's why you feel the way that you feel about that? No, nah, I feel that way because um, it's a, it's a double-edged sword. So <clears throat> I feel like somebody could get rehabilitated, mm-hmm. but after what time and do we know if they're rehabilitated? Mm-hmm. So you you really got – they got to prove, prove to you that they, they, they rehabilitated themselves. So I, f- I feel like – Yes, I do believe that some people can and they should be, um, but you have to walk it back for a while. You can't just have a good stretch and be like, I'm ready to come home. That that doesn't really work. That, I mean, this is me. This is me saying yeah. that because when I when I did something, I actually did it. Yeah. Um, and I expected the outcome to be what it is. Now, sometimes they could sentence you too harsh, basically. Yeah. But for the most part, here's a kicker. So somebody somebody kill your family member, Mm -hmm. you want the death penalty. Right. If your family member kills somebody else, you want them to come. Free my dog, you know what I'm saying, right? So so I just think it got to be fair across the board. Um, I feel you, but, I mean, God forbid, you know what I'm saying, if I was faced with something like that, Mm -hmm. if if a 16-year-old, 17-year-old, you know, I I could kind of, because I was there. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I did a lot of dumb shit. Me too. So I could could see where I could have got caught up and I and I'm not near the same person that I was at at 16, 17. Just from yeah. just naturally okay. growing and evolving. I got you. you know what I mean? But what but what what do you think your sentence should be if you did something dumb like that? You think it should be like five couple years? You good? It it well you know it, it depends on the circumstances. Okay. You know because I mean I hear what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Some of these little cats are demons. Some of them that that's all they want to be and mm-hmm. that's all they gonna be and that's all they know. You know what I mean? So I, I think it's situational. I think it depends on the situation. So some of them, if you if they you give them twenty and they get out in five, they coming home to do it again. They're not Maybe. really. You know what I'm saying? So I'm saying I'm saying it's got to be somebody who really walk the walk and talk the talk right, on right. rehabilitation. Right. It can't be like you know, you know, it can't be like I. I was in yeah. prison, I was doing whatever, not. I mean, because I got friends, dog, like, listen, I got a close friend that I went to elementary school mm-hmm. with, you know what I mean? And he did uh, 10 on a murder, you know what I mean? Okay. Him, he got out, you know, he killed some more motherfuckers. Oh, okay. But, okay, okay so that's how that went. But but I got a nephew who mm-hmm. just got out from doing 20, he literally just got out last year from okay. doing 20, I think he did 22 years. Okay. And he's, you know, and he was really young when he did good guy, it. Good guy. Yeah, but yeah. that was that was his first time ever being that's, in that's trouble. That's tough. That's tough. That's tough. He never. It was just one of them situations, and that's it tough. went wrong. And he made a split decision, and he wasn't even really that kind of kid. Now that's tough. Now you see, know? now that might be a little different. We, yeah. We talking about something where you made a mistake, and, right? And you, because we think about this, we young man. I'm telling you now, I'm just figuring it out. So we yeah. older. So that's why I'm saying I give. Some of these crimes, we have to give them a re- rehabilitation, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but then some of them, when it's really heinous, I, I mean, when you're young and you do heinous stuff, I yeah. think that the level of, like I was saying about Mac, like, right, like, let's say Mac, right. let's say free Mac, whatever, well, he's almost free. I, Mac has never done anything wrong. Right. Like, he ain't even back in the back of a cop car. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, right. And he talked it. But he was really just being right. Mac and a good just rapper, an artist, yeah, and good one of the best dudes you ever want to meet. Mm-hmm. And they gave it to him. He didn't do it. That's first and foremost, right? right? So, so that's like, and they wouldn't rehabilitate him. I mean, but he rehabilitated himself. But he walked the walk. He ain't never got in trouble. Right. I mean, he literally walked that walk. Yeah. So where they had no choice but to say, you got to let him out because yeah. he's the he was the best prisoner. He's the model prisoner. So, but in in the day is, he really was a person that didn't even do it, mm-hmm. per se. So he wasn't had no malice in his heart like that. Mm-hmm. So those type of people right there, they got to give them a chance. It's Like I said, some people, and like I said, I want everybody to get a chance because um, I know I was young and I didn't get it. Mm-hmm. I just want to know, like, it's fair. So yeah. if it's like, 
if you do something, take somebody away from their family, the the level can't be. Oh, I went to jail for eighteen months and I'm 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 yeah, better now. Nah, you know what I'm I, I feel like, you. you know I feel you. Yeah, it definitely shouldn't be that. I mean, <laughs> you, you know, you have to pay the cost. Yeah. You know, um, what was the craziest thing? I mean, being that we're talking about that, what was the craziest thing you seen growing up in the Calio? Mm, I would say the first time that I had actually, I was going to school, and there was like a a body sitting there, and I. And it was right in front of our door, so I just had to walk over it. And I, I think I heard somebody fighting the night before, and then boom, I think that that happened. So that's probably it. But stuff like that was just happening. I, I didn't even realize there was a problem until we moved out. Um, but it was stuff like that happened all the time. But that was like one of the crazy. That was my first time seeing it, and I was just like, like he ain't getting up. So that was kind of like something I saw. Besides that, what um, you say, Slim? He ain't getting up. <laughs> yeah, but you know, and, and I was young. I didn't even know what that was about. I just said, "Man, I was wanting to like wake up," but you know, he was just he was gone. Yeah, and um, that's probably it. And then I would say, like, um, I think like the girls in the neighborhood. I mean, I, I like I'm saying like, um, seeing some of the girls in the neighborhood trying to figure it out um, <laughs> around all the. The killers, right? Yeah. Like you know, like it's they, the killers. I mean, the, I can't even say killers. I'm saying the dudes who in the who in the streets, mm-hmm. um, just getting the girls because they street dudes, and the girls are like, yeah, I won't tell him no, but these are good girls. Like next thing you know, you see them, they 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 done, they are, you know, just some stuff I saw. I mean, it was like it was yeah. just crazy, but yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. So so you you grew up in New Orleans. So how did you wind up in Richmond? California. Um, I think you know what it was. We was we were starting doing music, um, and I think that with P, he was like doing more of like he wanted to do more conscious street type of music. Mm-hmm. And you know back then they were just doing P pop music. Everything was the bounce. bounce music. Yeah, yeah, bounce New music Orleans bounce. Like yeah. And um, I would say he we, we we was in he was in the street a little bit, so he had to make a change for sure. But yeah. it was music change and it was personal change. And so he just bounced one day and was like, "Yep, we out of here." Um, but why Richmond? What was the connection in so Richmond? So I think he had some a family member there. Oh, okay. Um, me personally, I I was like, um, when I thought of California, mm-hmm. right? I thought I thought California was like when I okay when I was growing up, I was always fantasizing about moving out, but I I didn't know what was out there. So think about a kid who's in New Orleans who just don't know any better, right? Mm-hmm. So. All I see is New Orleans, New Orleans, uptown, downtown, whatever, third world, whatever. And so one day I was watching, I was reading this book. I think it was like DuPont Registry or something like that. Yeah, yeah. And so <laughs> I turned the page, and it was like these palm trees. Mm-hmm. You know, in New Orleans, we don't see no palm trees. Everything is dirty. Everything yeah. is. So I was like, damn, it's, a, it's like it's like the moon or something. I'm like, what the, he- what the heck has got these trees and these big old houses? You know, we're in a project. So I'm looking at it like, and the first thing I saw was, um, <clears throat> It was this car, like a spaceship, mm-hmm. and it's just crazy. So, Ferrari, red Ferrari, right? <clears throat> and I'm like, man, what is that? Like, I thought it was a spaceship, something like that. So, so the word California meant like, oh, we going there? I'm like, oh yeah. my god. So P like, yeah, we going there? I'm like, oh, because I've seen this in a book, right? And I'm like, oh, maybe about to go there with the spaceships and these palm <laughs> trees and these big old mansions and stuff yeah. like that. And then we get off in Richmond. Yeah, yeah. That's what I was finna say. I mean, it was worse than the, it was worse than the Calio. You that's know what, what I was about to say. As someone from Northern California, I can tell you it ain't palm trees. Yeah, right. yeah. No, it ain't. It <laughs> right. was like as soon as we got there, it was it was the same thing. It was just crack. It was everywhere it was like dudes on the street hustling. It was like street walkers. You yeah. know, so we like, yo, what happened to the the big old you know the palm trees Wrong and part. the Ferraris and the big old yeah. Beverly Hills mansions? Yeah. So I was like, it was it did, but it was crazy because it was. <clears throat> The same thing we came from, but worse, because mm-hmm. we was we wasn't from there. So think right. about trying to figure your way through it. But I think the the thing saved us was coming from New Orleans was like um, I think it was it was different from California, meaning that I know California had gangs and stuff. Mm-hmm. In New Orleans, we didn't have any gangs, mm-hmm. and it was like you got to get it yourself. So with P was <laughs> it his mentality was. Um, was just like, um, was just like, don't play with me, right? So, mm-hmm. it, so that's tr- that's standard on any level. Like, right. you can recognize, don't play with me. And um, I think we got past it because n- nobody was expecting that level of aggressiveness. Like, 
from somebody coming in there. So right. what, what y'all want to do? Because see, think about this. And I'm not saying Cali is different, but I'm saying we don't really need nobody to ride with us. It's like if I got a problem with you, it, we just gonna do it. And they they had to do it where let me get a couple of my boys and come. We gonna be, yeah. I'll be back for y'all, right? Yeah. And, you know, we was like, where you going? You ain't going. Nah, you ain't going nowhere. You about to handle it right now. And so they were scared to literally go the one on one thing. It was like, no, 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 no. We be back for that. So it was kind of like they start they start respecting us because we was just like hustlers. We respected them, but you know we would be ready to do what we got to do too. And yeah. I think they just picked up on. I mean, I think P had gold teeth in his mouth. Yeah, they wasn't expecting that. Um, and he held his own. So I think that that's what. That's what they respected the most about him. Mm-hmm. Was it a gang element in Richmond when y'all went up Yeah, there? yeah. Everybody, I, I wasn't technically in a gang, but. We talked about it. You was affiliated. I was affiliated, yeah. but the, the crazy part about it is nobody, like I said, I, I was when I was growing up, nobody wanted to jump me in, basically. There's like, oh, you just a designated whatever we is. I ain't going to put put on the <laughs> whatever it was, but <laughs> it was like you designated whatever. But. Why what happened was, and I gained respect too, and I could do whatever I want to do was, um, I'm I'm with I'm with the shits too, right? So I'm really with it, and I'm all the way out there, and they couldn't understand how I was all the way out there, cause they'd be like, if somebody jumped my man's whatever, they'd be like, oh yeah, we are gonna get you in a couple of weeks. I'm like, nah, we gonna get them now, and they 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 be they be scared, so it's kind of like, none of them really wanted to, they didn't want to go up against me type of thing, but they didn't want um. They didn't feel like they had to jump me in because they was gonna get beat up anyway, probably, and they <laughs> just needed somebody to lead them in that direction. So I didn't have to really technically be jumped in, mm-hmm. um, but I was a leader though. So yeah. who, ain't no other kids gonna gonna put no hands on me like that. So right. they and they knew that. So they always come in and look for me like, oh, oh, shock. They um, they just ran up on your boy, you know. And I'm like, like I didn't I didn't believe in the whole drive by thing. Like they. They'll they'll say stuff like that. I'll be like, "What is that?" Like, you know, they'll, yeah. You was on the walk them down. That's back I'm walking then. them down, man. Yeah, them, man, whatever. <laughs> and they so they kind of like took that as like as a leadership type of thing. So yeah, that okay, was fun. okay. So I mean, being in Richmond was the I mean, so the the inception of the music shit. Mm-hmm. Like, is that something you always wanted to do, or you was just following Big Bro's lead, where he's like, "Hey, look, you know, I see this music thing is popping." Let's try to get into this. Did did P put the bug in you, or was that something that you already had brewing? Like, you know what? I want to try this this rapping thing. Um, I would say it definitely was him first. Um, but it it wasn't even started like that. It was it more started like um trying to stay out of trouble type of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but but it was a new hustle for him because he he knew that um. The E40s of the world, the Spice, mm-hmm. you know, he knew they was getting money. So, you know, what he is like, oh, they getting money like that? Okay, let me figure out. I, don't, I ain't a rapper, but let me see how they rapping. Yeah. Okay. Oh, they rap? Okay. So they in the studio. They went to Kale. They went to um, uh, K. Lou. K. Lou, yeah. All right. So he's like, oh, okay, K. Lou, make me this beat like this. And before you know it, it was kind of like um, just kind of figuring it out as it go. Mm-hmm. And But it was different. And the one thing I liked what he did was the most was... Um, he ain't spared no cost on the sound. Mm-hmm. So if you back back then it was all about the speakers, like yeah, you know, whatever was bumping in the speakers, they right. they, they like, and um, so we went to K. Lou, but nobody could afford K. Lou. Yeah, right? and Al Eaton. Al Eaton too. Yeah, Al yeah. Eaton too. Yeah, Al yeah. Eaton too. And they couldn't afford it, and so, but he made sure that K. Lou was like the Dr. Dre of mm-hmm. that. So yep. if you went to K. Lou, Real talk. but everybody else was just like, oh, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna go by courthouse and record this song, mm-hmm. and it sound like that. Mm-hmm. But if you went to K. Lou, but I got to come by courthouse. I mean, you know, you know I had that little rag <laughs> studio. I, I, got, I got the Jakey <laughs> studio. You got that Jakey studio. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I had the little full track recorder. Yeah, huh? Closet <laughs> studio. But no, but they. Um, so I mean, I'm just saying anybody in the yeah. hood with the with the speakers and stuff like mm-hmm. that. So, um, that's probably what they was doing. Mm-hmm. Um, but but he did, what he did was he had to take a little couple of odd job, but mm-hmm. he he got the songs and once the people heard it, it wasn't even about the music. It was like when they came. With their cars, heard that music, it came back again. And so that would be what that was, Mama's Bad Boy, Eric, cause, or was that Ghetto's Trying to Kill Me? Because I know you had the, the Real Untouchables. What was the first oh, No bro. Limit record? Because it you was one where the album cover was drawn, right? It was sketched. Or so here, like here's the story behind that. I'm going to give you a sluice because you're my dog. Um, so 
when we had the store, right? Mm -hmm. So we had the store and we felt we realized how easy it was for them to um actually sell records. So all the D-boys coming there on Tuesdays, boom, they like, give me whatever you got. Right. What's hot? What's hot? What, what y'all got is hot. So be like, oh, Too Short came out. They go buy like a hundred of them, pass out in the hood, boom, boom. They, they, they come in their mink coats on, they come with their money, mm -hmm. big old wide, drop it down, whatever, right? They, mm -hmm. Give me give me a hundred of those, give me two hundred of those, pass out the neighborhood. So we was like, damn, we sold a thousand CDs in one week, right? So based on our word. So we're like, oh, my man, right, right album came out. They're going to buy 50 of them, 100 of them. Everybody coming out on Tuesday, they're going to buy it, right? So, so we like, yo, that's crazy. So we go try to do music. But so the first record, if you notice it, it had no cover on it. Yeah. I think it was TRU, but it had, okay. it had just the words on it. Okay. But that was by design because we was the rappers, right? Uh, so we was like... What, what's, what's hot? What's hot? They coming out. What's hot? Oh, okay, on? I see. What's yeah, hot? Yeah, came yeah. out right. What's hot? Yeah. What's hot? They like. They like. They like. Um. They like. This this new group called TRU hot. They hot. They yeah. blowing up. Give me a hundred of those. Mm. Right. Another person. Give me fifty of those. Give me twenty of those. Girls. So y'all was on some anonymous shit. Just trying we was to anonymous. Yeah, yeah. And man, but here's the thing about it. When they came in, they was like, yeah, just give it to me. When next week they came, man, what was that TRU stuff? Man, that, them, them, them boys go hard, right? So that's what the whole thing. And mm. now we like. Oh, for real? So we didn't sold 500 CDs, 800, you know, 800 CDs in a week. That's a nice little bag, you know what I'm saying, of our stuff. So next thing you know, P, like, you know, do it again. You know, yeah. he's going to do it again and do it again yeah, and do it sure. again. So did it again. They came back. They're like, anything in the TR you dropped, let us know. You know what I'm saying? So the first two records had no faces, I think. Even Mama's Bad Boy, did it have face? I think it did. Mama's Bad Boy did. Nah, yeah. I don't think so. It had, no, it um, did. It had P getting handcuffed or something like that with a hat on. <clears throat> Which it was one, and then y'all did one where you had the ski mask, the stocking caps. Okay, that's one. That's mm -hmm. one. Okay, so get that away one. clean. It was another one that had the the master card on it or something, but it that might have been real early. Oh, real? Okay, yeah. whatever that was, yeah. we did the first two or three with nothing on it, but the but the words <clears> on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it, yeah, yeah. So you remember what your? So did you always go by silk? Yeah, I went. I went by. Um, at first, I went by just silk by itself. I'm saying it wasn't no name before Silk. It was just Silk by itself. Yeah, it was just Silk. Okay. Um, and what happened was um, the group Silk mm. sued me. Damn. Right? They tried to sue me, right? So they're like, oh, change. Um, as I start blowing up a little bit, they're like, change that name, right? So I'm like, okay. So what I did was I put two Ks on it. Yeah. Like my first record was called The Shocker, right? So they're like, they ain't good enough. This is a classic. Yeah, yeah, appreciate it. They're like, they ain't good enough. So they're like, okay, cool. So once they did that, I had to I had to change it again. So everybody called me the shocker anyway. So mm -hmm. we just put two and two together. There you have it. You know what I'm saying? I'm glad. Thank you, Silk. Thank you, Group Silk. <laughs> Appreciate y'all. So so listen. So when you go into the studio, your first or say the first couple of studio sessions, mm -hmm. right? What? How did a young Silk the shocker develop the style? The infamous style. The the the, the double time stutter step. Rapping off beat, whatever they want to call it. How did how did you come up with that, or was it just natural? You know what? I was just being myself. Um, I think the first record, man, I did. I think I can't remember the word. Oh, it was together trying to kill me. Okay. Right. So if you go back, I thought I was like, um, I thought I sounded horrible. I'm like, that sounds like a little baby, some <laughs> kind of girl. Like I'm like whatever. But you know what it is? It's like when you speaking. Like, kind of like a you know, like just real because I was in the street, like I was really in there. Mm -hmm. I was just rapping like two keys a day. You never seen yeah. someone, you know, like yeah. three o'clock up in the morning chopping. I was just going I mean, in. It sounded heartfelt, you know. It, That's I why it resonated. Cause I was it was in real. I was yeah. in court. I was yeah. in that thing. I was like, um, I just saw my boy pass away. Like, you know, I was like, I was really in it. So when I was rapping, I just I don't think even I don't think I even wrote it. I was just rapping, and that's kind of like been my consistent thing of. Um, just being before, I was talking to somebody, uh, actually um, QC, whatever, and it was just like, man, you guys are one of our favorite rappers. Of course, Pete was his favorite hustler, but he was like, man, you was before your time. He said, even uh, Lil Baby and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You know, he 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 reminded me of you a little bit and stuff like that. I thought that was dope that um, mm -hmm. that and, and and I was supposed to do something with Lil Baby too, so the level of respect was there. So even going back to that, when I first did my first my first um, project. Um, oh, actually, first song, I felt that way. But that song, the mom, the ghetto trying to kill me, mm -hmm. in a bay was 
crazy, but it it was me on it. And the yeah. people was like, who was him? And from E40, E40, uh, everybody was just like going crazy, you know, going crazy over that particular song that yeah. I my verse, right? So I kind of was like cool, but when I knew it was crazy. I was at the um, I don't know if I told you before, but I was at the video a video shoot with um, E40, Spice One, and I think Tupac came through. Mm-hmm. And man, I, I I can't make this up. It's no lie. I was just I was young, but I was wild. So I'm looking around, and I'm just like, uh, and I just see I, this is crazy. I, I don't know if I told people before, but I seen Tupac, and I'm just looking, and Tupac is like looking at me, like like really looking at me. And I think I was talking to E40 or something. He was like, man, you so you, you cold man, you you cold young man. Let let's get let's do something, whatever. And then I seen Tupac, and he was like um, just looking at me, but I was like in the street street, so I'm like, yo, you got one more time to look at me, and I'm, <laughs> but, but then E-40 was like, no, nah, we were just listening to your music in the car, and, and Pac was like really going in with it. I'm like, oh, this is crazy, but I didn't really know Pac like that yeah. until I know Pac way later yeah. on, but I just thought he's a regular dude, but when I pulled, you know, I did the homework, it was like, oh, when E-40 mentioned it and stuff like that, I was like, oh, that's crazy, but I was young, so, um, but yeah, I, I was just... So Pac was over there looking at you like Bishop. Yeah, I was gonna say, did he just say yeah, he's he trying to on, run the fade on yeah, Pac? Yeah, he was on some Bishop. I, shit. I wouldn't say I run the fade on, but no, but no, it was. But you know what? It was like this because I, I don't know. I was just had chip on my shoulder on everything. Yeah. So he was just looking like, like I, if somebody you, you know you like, yeah. like he was just looking, and I was just like, I think you're looking too much. But that was just me just being that was like just you dumb. tripping out. <laughs> you know, yeah, I'm just tripping. Like he, yeah. he wasn't really looking like that. Like I'm mugging you. He was just yeah. looking like. I just we just listen to your music type of thing. I same thing happened. I was I met Drake one time, and I would same thing out. So I I was in I was I think it was at the um, the the I think a music award, and it was when first when he first came out, and I was just I was just kind of I just was bumping it like this dude is talented. Mm-hmm. Seen him, and he, he rec- recognized me stuff like that. But I guess he must have thought I was want to do a song or something. But I was just like, yo man, this is this is dope. You're a dope artist. Um, just you know, it's gonna be a little tricky mm-hmm. being young and in the game. So I was just giving the game. But he thought I wanted a, 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 a track, so I wasn't even thinking about that. But I thought that you know it was just a cool little, cool little dude. And of course, he's Drake now. But um, yeah, I got a funny Drake story yeah. too. <laughs> <laughs> Drake, Drake, Drake be on one. He he, he a little slickster. But I was uh, I actually was having a meeting at mm-hmm. uh, Philippe uh, Philippe Childs, mm-hmm. uh, the one that Manny used to own. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I was there doing a meeting, mm-hmm. and I was there with uh, A.J. Johnson, the actress, mm-hmm. and we was meeting down there about something I was helping her with. And so I guess I, apparently he must have thought that we was together, mm-hmm. you know, so he came in with his family, and we were sitting in a little private area. Mm-hmm. And uh, <laughs> I seen him looking, you know, mm-hmm. and he, but he didn't say nothing. Mm-hmm. I get up, I go to the restroom. I come back from the restroom, he mm-hmm. over there <laughs> talking to A.J., you know what I mean? Okay. Yeah, you know. And so when I came back, he was just like, oh, man, you know, much respect, mm-hmm. man. I just wanted to tell her I was a fan, you mm. know, woo, 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 you know. Okay. But I'm thinking you could have did that while I was oh, just sitting here. Like, okay. it wasn't nothing like that with me. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, why you couldn't come over and say, hey, I'm a yeah, fan, yeah, you know? yeah. But <laughs> shout out to Drake, though, yeah, yeah, you know no what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, he was, he was still very pleasant and respectful, mm-hmm. but... I was like, why well, I had to get up? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? For you to come, you know, he was on something, you yeah. know what I mean? But um, but so you do the ghettos trying to kill me, mm-hmm. and then you know, you catch a little buzz. So whose idea was it for you to go solo? I mean, because you were just coming off of doing a feature, you know what I'm saying? So what, you know, what how um, did you have that that confidence to say, you know what, I'm finna do this solo? I, you know what? I didn't, mm-hmm. and then the people spoke, man. They just mm-hmm. spoke. I mean, man, I did this one song. If you go back, I think it was on P record, and it was it was hard, man. It was it was hard. And I think it was a small intro. I can't remember what it was, I'll find out later, but it was a small intro, and I'll tell you, I I ripped it. Mm-hmm. By that time, it was the everybody was like, you gotta come out with a record. Yeah. So that time, I, but I was, like I said, I was just in the, when it's time to go to the studio, I, I, you know, I don't really write much. Right. I was just speaking off the dome, and I think the, the Shaka album proved it, like, it was just, it was, yeah, it was definitely before it's time, like. The, the Shaka album is probably personally one of my favorite albums. I can see that. I can see yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah especially. It's one, it's one of the best, I think, in yeah. No Limit catalog. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, I'm, salute my yeah. guys. <laughs> I, was in, I was in Sacramento at the time, so we wasn't that far away. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So when it was buzzing with yep. all that 99 yep. ways to die, like mm-hmm, it was, mm-hmm. you know, we was 45 minutes. Yep, yep. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I remember it all coming out, but yeah. That, yeah. yeah. No, it, it and it felt like, I didn't know it at first, but it felt like, um, 
it was just me just doing it. So I guess I've always been a story kind of could, could put stuff to paper, but really just put stuff out. Mm-hmm. So the people will would um would just be would would actually say that. Mm-hmm. So when it was time to put a solo record out, they just wouldn't accept nothing else but a solo record from me. Like they they was like, we're gonna boycott y'all if you don't come out of the record. So I had to go in the studio. Uh, I did the album quick as heck. Just kind of got some tracks and stuff, and mm-hmm. and it was just coming to me like because um, that's that's before uh, Beats by the Pound came out. You were still working with because I don't re- remember Beats by the Pound having no music on on Silk on Shocker on the Shocker. Nah, it seemed like it was all like K. Lou and and kind of those Bay Area. Uh, yeah, because it wasn't nothing kind of bouncy on it. Oh, it still, might, it was still kind of Bay Area influenced a lot. What you say? You might be right about that. Yeah, I mean the Shocker. Yeah. You might be right. Yeah, I, but I did work with Carlos Nim. Mm-hmm. XL, I think, mm-hmm. was on there. XL did something on oh, Shocker? Let me see. No, no, no. It was like Moby, like Cuz and all those. Yeah. But no, I said, no, take that back. I got to find out. That's a good question, though. Yeah. Um, it, it definitely was different, but I know I know Carlos was on it. Mm-hmm. Um, damn, was Mike Diesel in the movie? Nah. Nah, I don't think he is. Nah, yeah, I gotta, I gotta see the producers. Yeah, that, that's that's a different. So, so a lot of people, again, they, they. They always, you know, no limit is synonymous with mm-hmm. the independent grind. Mm-hmm. Like, what was that? I know what it was like because mm-hmm. I came around 95, 96. Yeah. But what was that 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 grind like, you know what I mean, in that time? Like, take us into the headspace of U and P and C, you know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. you hadn't yet made it. It was something you was chasing at that time. Like, what was that grind like? Was you hitting cities? I mean, I'm sure yeah. it was hitting these little, yeah. you know, chitlin' circuits and the propensity for – for fighting and 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 shit, crazy shit happening. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, what was? Did you experience crazy stuff out on the road and and that whole grind, trying to really get it to pop before it popped? Yeah, well, it was different for us because man, the hustle was whew, through the roof. I mean, we would um, we would be like um, outwork everybody, <clears throat> no sleep, wear the same clothes three or four days in a row. Mm-hmm. Um, the grind was real, but you know, when you really want it and you don't have any other option. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think I, I would say P more um, laid the charge on that because mm-hmm. hustling wasn't really my thing. Um, I mean, if you know what he do not do now, so it's like he he grind. Mm-hmm. So that's the same way he was before. So I have to say in that perspective, salute to him because if it was on me mm-hmm. to do it, I wouldn't have got – no limit to there. Yeah. You know, I'm good now. I'm smart right. and stuff now. But at that time, it, it took it took that. Because we would, I would have been good with, a, you know, half a million, a million. Right. But then I would have probably, you know, tricked that, you know, messed that off and whatever. And been, but I think the consistency, he knew about it. That's why we would, we would find ourselves in the craziest places selling CDs. Mm-hmm. And, like, I mean, one time we went to a place, I mean, they was like, Imagine going to your hood, like, but the worst hood, like, right? Let's say if we going to, if in Compton, if let's say Compton, how Compton was, or, or, I don't know, if you talk Oakland, whatever. But imagine some dudes that ain't from there just pull up in the middle of the hood yeah. and be like, "Yo, I got these CDs for sale." Mm-hmm. Now you gonna be like, somebody gonna go crazy, gonna go off on these two, these dudes coming in there. But I remember one dude was like. You gotta be kidding me, y'all! Y'all back in our hood. I'm talking. About these are real hitters, yeah. right? Like you, y'all back here. Y'all, y'all got to Y'all gotta be. Y'all, y'all the police or something? Cause y'all, 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 y'all crazy, yeah. right? So that's that's their mentality, right? So they really was thinking about like doing us some, but they're like, you know what? I respect what y'all trying to do. I don't get it. Y'all crazy. That's like, that's like jumping in the lion's den, whatever. Mm-hmm. But snake pit. But you know what? We all getting money. I don't, I don't understand y'all, man. But give me them CDs. Oh, my fault. Oh, give me them CDs. You know what I'm saying? And um, and 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 he go, he go, hundred bucks. Now get out of here. So yeah. we was doing stuff like that, but we were so naive and dumb. Mm-hmm. What we we try, we had to get it that we didn't even think about the safety. We just yeah. like we all in D.C. We all in Chicago. Mm-hmm. And you know the thing about it is, like I said about being a, a cub, it's like. You don't know any better. You right. just wander in the world, you know what I'm right. saying, freely. Did y'all ever get into any shit? Of course, of course. Yeah. Of course. There was what some was people. Cra- what was the craziest like thing trying to build no limit? The craziest I, shit that happened. I know you heard about the story in the Oakland, whatever. We we fighting, 
and um, we in a yeah. club. We we Which from one? Richmond. We from Richmond. Yeah. But we was in Oakland performing, which you're not supposed to be in, and we just um, it kicked off, man. It was crazy. We we got into a, a pretty pretty serious fight. Um, what happened? Walk us through it. I don't know if I know this one. You don't know this one? The yeah. one I lied about, somebody stepped on my foot, that one? I'm sure you heard that one before, Kurt. Cool. Yeah, but tell us again. <laughs> I think I was I was just young, uh-huh. and I just wanted to fight. Um, so we in Oakland, and I'm just chilling, and then yeah. um, some dude walked past. I ain't like the way he looks, so I'm like, oh, okay. So I just said, oh, man, he stepped on my foot. And then everybody, looked, you know, whoever with us is like, you did what? So then, boom. Whole club start fighting, boom, boom, boom. It's going to go crazy. Yeah. And it was, it's crazy because I, it almost got us in trouble. Mm-hmm. Well, we we could have, I ain't going to go into too much detail, but we could have got, you could have been, um, you know, could have yeah. took the shock and pee in the Yeah, I know, the, I know that part. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know that part. But I mean, I mean, like I said, to me, it's like, you know, no matter what happens, um, it's supposed to be that way. Mm-hmm. Um, us coming from the Calio Project, it's supposed to be that way. I mean, we could have been born in Beverly Hills, but we wouldn't have been sucker shock and no limit, right? Mm-hmm. So um, I take everything with a with a grain of salt where it's like um, just trust the process, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, okay, so you put out the shocker. Mm-hmm. By the way, that's uh, it's like a third. It's, it's KLC, K. Lou, and Carlos. What's on that album? Yeah, I looked it up. So. Oh yeah, yeah, because they did um one, two, three. You know, oh, Silk G. Yeah, yeah. Yep. yeah it's, it's almost a third right down the middle. Yeah, yeah. The beat in so the production. Uh, okay. Ah, you know, come on, man, get it up. Step okay. it up, bro. You know. What all right, all right. Okay, coming through. I mean, you know, Google, Google, <laughs> we Google, Google, uh, we Google it. So, um, so now you got the shocker out, mm-hmm. okay? And after the shocker, I remember it was uh, true to the game, mm-hmm. and then it, Ice Cream Man, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and that's mm-hmm. what. That opened the that kicked the door in. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So as that was unfolding, you know, now I was around around that time as well. Mm-hmm. What what was that like? That feeling of okay, we 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 here. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like like what was that? And especially once the money start flowing, like you know what I mean? What was that feeling like? Um, I think okay. So we we hustling we hustling the CDs. Um, the best thing was for us was that. I think we did the eighty five fifteen deal, so that was that deal. was dope. So, yeah. but that was right before we was had a little buzz, but they didn't think that we would become what we became. Right. So they gave us eighty five fifteen. Exactly. Like, let me just get these dudes off the street. Yeah, they thought you was just gonna sell yeah. hundred thousand, yeah. fifty thousand. Yeah. But the but the best thing ever happened was us being in the trenches like that. So if we in KC, you yeah. remember like, man, I remember yeah. no limit. Them boys came out here and. So every city just caught on fire. Like mm-hmm. you would be like, "Yo, I remember them boys out here." You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Then that KC is on lock for us. Right. Um, I think it, it became where the music caught up to who we were, the hustle. So once we did that, it, it just. I think they put out. I think the first real one was "I'm About It." Mm-hmm. When that came out, yep. It it just blew up everywhere, right? And mm-hmm. then I the sound, the soundtrack. No, the, no song. Talking, the song. The song. Oh, the, the song. song. The, the song. song. Yeah. The soundtrack too, but the song. The <clears throat> song came out and it just boom. Caught Crazy it. thing about the song, Slim. No, no cap, right? Uh, that's when I when P it flew us out there mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. we came out there with y'all. And um, I remember hearing about it when it wasn't even mixed. You yeah. know, he had just did it, mm-hmm. and this is a true story. P can tell you this. When I heard it. I thought it was some bullshit. Of course. You okay. know what I'm saying? Because I didn't get it. Mm-hmm. I, I told him. I said, P, I was like, what the, what the fuck is this? Mm-hmm. And he just laughed. He said, I'm going to have a whole world saying I'm about it. I was like, no. I was like, I don't even know what you're saying. You know what I mean? And I didn't get it. You know what I mean? And I, I bullshit you not. By the time we got back to Kansas City, I promise you, everybody in their mama was playing it. And I was like, yeah. oh, that's what he meant. Yeah. Oh, okay. I get it now. And it was it was just a testament to to Big Bro's genius and his foresight. You know what I'm saying? Like, and and, and it's you look at it. It was like okay, like when you think about it with P and with No Limit. This is how I always looked at it. You had Easy E passed away, mm-hmm. uh, Biggie passed away, mm-hmm. and Tupac passed away, which I think created a hole mm-hmm. for P to run right through. Because I remember. It was like everybody was scared of the gangster shit after mm-hmm. Tupac died mm-hmm. and Biggie died. Everybody kind of was kind of getting on some jiggy shit mm-hmm. and moving away from that. Mm-hmm. And P just ran right through that hole with the mm-hmm. I'm about it. You know what I mean? And I think he was instrumental in 
Like even now, you can even see his his thumbprint now because if you think about it, the records that really do well, the reason why Atlanta and the South mm-hmm. has really had the, this music scene mm-hmm. is because everything they can bounce to. It's yep. got that that bop to it. Yep. Whereas when West Coast had it, it was more, it was laid back, it was slow. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And so P, he incorporated that that bounce, which yep. initially he was trying to get away from. Because yep. really, when you think about it, about about it is kind of a bounce record. It is, it is. You know what I mean? So he was able to put that gangster shit on top of that bounce, mm-hmm. and it gave people that energy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I remember it when about when I got back to Kansas City, man, about it had blew up. I said, "Damn!" I called him. It's like, bro, you was right. That's crazy. Well, too. So with that being said, it was it was. It was Kansas City, Chicago, mm-hmm. Memphis. It happened at the same time. So right. So now the labors are like, what's going on? They, but they only own a little bit. So they're not promoting it like that because they're like, they're like, we ain't really getting that much from it, right? Mm-hmm. So now when you walk in the office, you sold so many of them. Mm-hmm. We did that. We started out with like ten grand, right? Mm-hmm. But we then we turned that to a hundred. And we made everything ourselves. So they didn't they have no money for us. Mm-hmm. Like they they didn't our album, he did the album cover himself. He did the um shout the pen and pixel because I got the money off the, the dice. Yeah. The first album cover off the dice. Yeah. yeah. That's what I do, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but um, so you got that, you got yeah. we did our own videos, so we walk in now, it's almost like literally they we didn't get no money from them. Mm-hmm. So that so you know the hustle with the 10 grand. Imagine walking the office now, you got five million from mm. the streets. You know what I'm saying? You got five million. So that's where it came at. If you can make five million, you can make ten. If you make ten, right. you can make twenty. Right. And then you can eventually make Forbes at four hundred million. So you could, you know, like mm-hmm. if you just keep hustling. Most people are like, Oh, I got five million, I'm good. Let's Yeah, they rest on their lower. They rest on that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And yeah. I think that's what the nineteen albums came out in one year. Mm-hmm. Um signing Snoop, Mesco, you know what I'm saying? All that type of stuff. So it just was the mentality, like, I, I've learned from it now where, um, yeah, I might be a little successful, but my grind is so ridiculous now, um, and I, I, I take the same logic. Even though I don't worry about what I did before, I think if you take that same principle and be able to um, apply it to whatever you're doing now. Mm-hmm. So, you know, to me, that's what's been my, my best thing as far as that, but as far as back then... It was just having the ability to do whatever you want to do. So, like, say you're a businessman, you're a businessman. If when you wake up, um, you have ideas. You might say, I'm going to do this film, I'm going to do this talk show, podcast, whatever it's going to be. Mm-hmm. And then the only thing that will stop you is financially, mm-hmm. right? So, so if you know how Pete think, whatever, right? Yeah. So, every day he wakes up, he's trying to figure out something else to do. Mm-hmm. So, imagine being able to do it. Yeah. That, so, that's the catch. We all could do whatever, but we all have ideas. But most people, I found people that be needing a thousand bucks and they'll make a million because they got that mentality. Mm-hmm. So when they gave him that kind of money, it was just like, why should I sleep? Right. You know what I'm saying? 50 albums a year. You know what I'm saying? Let's do 100 videos. You know what I'm saying? And so, yeah, that was it. I mean, that, and it just kept on going because why would it stop? Right. If, if you don't get lazy with it, 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 it shouldn't stop. You should take. Now, when it got to a certain point, because everything's gonna hit a hit a wall, mm-hmm. um, I think what most people would say is, when you're successful, um, the I would say the opposition is going to try to find a way to break it up, mm-hmm. right? So in all the all the successful companies in the world, yeah, yeah. are go- like they'll be like, oh, Court, you're doing, you, you own Warner Brother. What well, the other people gonna say? Who's making Warner Brother? I mean, I'm not saying Warner Brother. Let's take it back. Let's say whatever your company is. If you're successful, another company is gonna say, "What make what make you successful?" Oh, the VP. They're gonna hire the VP away from you. Um, if it's if it's records, they're gonna say, "How can I take this artist who's hot?" <clears throat> if it could be anybody, it could be myself, musical, whatever. They're gonna offer you something to take you. You know, so yeah. Every label gonna have to figure out. Um, it's just gonna happen because most people grow. If you are a player, you're gonna want to be a coach one day. You're gonna be a broadcaster. It just you're gonna want to own a team. Right. The growth is gonna go there. So so with no limit, we could have kept going a long time, but eventually people are gonna grow up and be like, I want my own label. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's successful or not, but right. they just gonna do that. That's yeah. just how it goes. So um, that w- and that's the only roadblock. 
of not taking a half a billion and getting a billion. Right. Because it, it's gonna ch the dynamic is gonna change. Like like um, I would say, um, they're gonna see it. So when I walk to the airport the first time, they're gonna be like, oh my god, silk shock, whatever. Boom. Second time is gonna be like, oh the silk. They're like, oh I know that. What's my guy right there? You know what I'm saying? And then it's gonna get it's gonna get trickled down. Yeah. So by the time I take a picture and they be like. They see you now, they're like, oh, that's just silk. He comes through all the time. You see what I'm saying? So, so with the label stuff, it's the same thing. They're gonna, they're gonna find themselves um, at a crossroad at success. So if you somebody, I'm not gonna say no, no label's name, but any label successful now, it's gotta be a, a a fam vibe, but also gotta have an understanding of um, people gotta know the the part to play. Mm -hmm. Some people don't some people don't wanna play that part. Some right. people wanna play. And everybody not meant to be the boss. Right. Everybody not meant to, like, what I learned, taught myself is um, you make yourself a boss when nobody's hiring, mm -hmm. right? But if you got something successful, then you could, you definitely want to, you know, give people promotion, right? Um, but, but in reality, either you got to be a good leader or a good follower. You know what I'm saying? Everybody, because everybody's not meant to be the boss, you, but you have to know uh, when it's time to advance yourself, because um, everybody should have advancement. So I think that's going to be the part that every good, every big company is going to have to to turn over. And usually the problem comes with um, black-owned companies. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I, I'm not saying it's a white or black thing, but I'm saying I, as a black person, I'm always looking at the guy at the top, seeing if I could take him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, right, right. like, yeah, you'd be like, oh man. You, 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 I don't, whatever, I don't like what you're doing. So it's always critiquing that person. Mm -hmm. um, but um, David Stern, on, I mean, not David Stern, um, Adam Silver run the NBA. Nobody ever questioned his, 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 his judgment decision. Right. Um, so that's, that's the only thing you're going to have to deal with in our culture as um, um, this, when you get to a certain level of success. They're going to start saying, you, you make too much money. Next time on the Holding Court Podcast, what was the most – so you so you say the two the two Ferraris was probably your biggest splurge. Now I was just man I bought so much jewelry um, and I just lost a lot of it. Um, you you lost it or you? I lost I, it? I don't even know if I lost. It. I think having wrong people around you too they just pick it up. Damn. Um, you know they when you sleep they they take it. I mean what you gonna do about it?